I'm reminded, um, Jonathan, when we think about uh, the arc of uh, progress and the frustration of, uh, of movements, you know, I'm somebody who um, has always held on to a kind of radical hope. You mentioned uh, Amadou Diallo, who was um, uh, an immigrant who was uh, killed, murdered, executed by the New York Police Department uh, at the vestibule uh, of his own uh, home, uh, a man who was unarmed, innocent of any uh, criminality uh, whatsoever. Um, he just happened to be uh, uh, black in the wrong place uh, at the wrong uh, time. Uh, and I uh, was blessed to um, be in a position uh, to help organize uh, sustained civil disobedience uh, demonstrations uh, and actions uh, against what occurred uh, in that moment. But it was not my first moment of being engaged in police uh, violence issues. I've been engaged in them since I was uh, a teenager, since I was 16 years old. I first um, experienced police violence myself uh, and then saw it play out uh, in my community. But the Diallo moment was a time when um, through applied action and a tremendous amount of pressure on government and the development of a constituency of accountability, we were able to actually um, resource for the first time uh, in our city, uh, an independent civilian complaint review board that's subsequently been modeled in other states in America and uh, in other parts of the world. When I served as a US ambassador uh, in South Africa, I had South African justice activists uh, explained to me how they were able to stand up modes of independent accountability based on what we had done uh, during the uh, Diallo moment. So yes, you're right that, that um, uh, sometimes the pace of change, the pace of justice moves uh, too slowly, but I uh, want to be just, just clear uh, that um, uh, progress uh, is, uh, is possible uh, and is happening, has happened in real time and, and continues to uh, happen. We have to maintain a hopefulness uh, about it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm reminded here by uh, the, the words of one of my favorite uh, poets uh, and, and statesmen, Vaclav uh, uh, Havel, who said that uh, hope is not the conviction that something will turn out uh, well, but rather the certainty that something makes sense <laughs> irrespective of how uh, it turns out. So there's a hopefulness uh, that we have about our march towards justice. Now, uh, this moment uh, right now, uh, Jonathan, um, uh, speaks to what uh, the founder of our um, philanthropy, George Soros, uh, um, refers to as a revolutionary moment, a revolutionary time where suddenly the rules seemingly uh, don't seem to apply uh, and everything and anything is possible uh, and that everything and anything that's possible um, may be towards the common good but one has to be vigilant, vigilant that anything is possible uh, that could regress uh, and retard progress uh, as well. Right now, Jonathan, um, uh, it, it, this is a moment where uh, ideas and prescriptions that have uh, been on the shelf and have been gathering dust since the Carter Commission uh, in the 1960s uh, over the last several decades, suddenly everyone's reaching again uh, for uh, those solutions uh, and to apply them. We're at a moment where People are calling for a kind of radical reimagination of what policing looks like uh, in our communities. Uh, where we consider that in the United States there are 18,000 independent uh, police uh, agencies. Uh, there are hardly any federal uh, guidelines that uh, give us a sense of um, how uh, their authority uh, should be used. And instead, we have a federal government that's giving resources to the police, uh, that resources that are unused by the military. Uh, that's helped to, to increase the militarization uh, of responses in communities when we should have more resources used for uh, other kinds of interventions uh, using other democratic tools. Uh, the, 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 the tools that come out of, of social work, the tools that come out of mental health uh, therapy, the tools that come out of harm reduction and, and drug therapy. Uh, and uh, at a moment, Jonathan, when one has to appreciate that the U.S., which uh, represents less than 5% of the population of the globe, imprisons more than 20% of those who are in jail around the world, 